I'm Larry Jewell from the uh, Edmonton Pride Seniors Group. I'd like to thank you all for attending our, our weekly Aging with Pride discussion group for GLBTQ uh, 2S plus seniors and allies. Uh, thanks as well to our partner Sage and Pride Center of Edmonton. And before I introduce our speaker, I must acknowledge that we are located on Treaty 6 territory and respect the history, languages, and cultures of uh, First Nations, Métis, Inuit, and all First Nations uh, people of Canada, whose presence continues to enrich our community. Uh, our speaker today then is Don Carter, Executive Director of uh, Edmonton Pride Center. Dawn brings to this uh, position her experience as a writer, educator, performance poet, public speaker, entrepreneur, and activist of uh, Caribbean heritage. She believes in justice and empowerment. Uh, a galvanizing moment for her was the uh, firing of Delwyn Breen from his university post simply because he was gay. Uh, Don was then a student there and wrote an editorial that called out campus-wide misogyny and rallied people to confront the issue. Uh, she has collaborated with Altview, Youth Rights Society of Canada, the Anderson Career Training Institute, and the African Center. She is a published writer whose work has appeared in a, an anthology of Black writers from the Canadian prairies. She is inspired by her late cousin Ian and by Open Blue Skies, which we have today. So thank you for being here with us, Don, and over to you. Thank you so much for your kind introduction, Larry. So I'm just going to share my screen. And I, I just thank all of you for coming to this presentation. And um, yeah, at the end when I said I was, you know, in, uh, when Larry had mentioned that I was inspired by my cousin Ian in Blue Skies. Um, my cousin Ian um, was gay um, in the Caribbean and um, it was just a very, very sweet soul. And he had passed away from AIDS um, in the mid 90s. So I, I miss him a lot. And when I took this role um, and I actually meditated my first day just to kind of get myself centered and who popped up in my conscious consciousness it was ian someone who i hadn't thought about in a few years and it just made me think you know what i'm taking the right role i'll be in the right place so I just wanted to share that okay so just going to share my screen and on to the presentation um so this is just a modification of a presentation that I had given uh, as part of a network summit. There were a number of uh, 2S LGBTQ plus organizations um, who had started getting together to just talk about what we can do to build a more inclusive community for ourselves. And also just thinking about um, what pride would look like um, as well as part of our discussions and so the title of that talk was called moving forward together and i thought that that would also be an appropriate theme for today as well because the pride center of edmonton is a it is a small organization that serves a huge uh, varied uh, populace of people uh, and so what I've been spending my time doing and uh, is like really thinking about building trust and building community. And I think trust has been an issue over the last few years. And I wanted to restore um, the trust that uh, people would have in the Pride Center and also building community. So not... Um, not approaching the pride center as like the the center the the be all and end all when it comes to 
um, to us LGBTQ plus serving organizations in the city, but that we are part of a greater whole, um, you know, including the Edmonton Pride Seniors uh, Group and Altview and Edmonton Two Spirit Society and Isthmus um, and all of these like grassroots organizations like Shades of Color and Rare Canal. Um, so my thoughts were, how do I build trust? How do I, how do I build community? Um, so I just want to say thank you to Estefan Cortes Vargas, the previous director before me. Um, Estefan had the uh, the experience of running the center just as COVID was starting to hit us, and really. The work that he did keeping the doors open um, allowed me to be here today. And I also like to thank Satara Fernando, who is the former interim director uh, last summer. Um, after Esteban departed, I told uh, the board that I pretty much needed some time to kind of get my own gears in order uh, because I hadn't been like fully out to my family and this position was like a very public one. And so I had a lot to think about and just a lot of preparation to do like just mentally for this role. And so Satara, um, I thank her for the work that she did over the summer, um, just keeping things going um, until I started in October of last year. So I thought I'd throw in some interesting pictures and quotes. So. Um, I like this quote, the point is to get your work done and your work is to change the world. And I think that's the reason why we're here today. And it's a picture of Bayard Reston from the States who um, I always like to say, if there wasn't, uh, uh, if there wasn't such discrimination against um, LGBTQ plus people in America, we probably would be celebrating Bayard Reston Day instead of Martin Luther King Day. Um, so I just wanted to uh, just do a quick overview of our PCE superstars. So of course there's me. Um, if you ever call you or email, you will reach Ontavia Roberts, our administrative officer. Um, SJ Lafayette is our operations manager. And uh, this is a new role um, at the center because we've, uh, we realize that we've inherited a history and how can we change that history um, moving into the future so that anyone in executive roles doesn't burn out, which seemed to be a trend over the last number of years. So as I'm the ED, um, SJ handles the operational pieces and it's been, um, it's been wonderful to have this, uh, uh, this division of labor when it comes to the leadership team. We also have Shondi Kowalchuk, who is our youth programs director, uh, Dami Oladosu, who is our outreach coordinator, social media, Kim Lorene, of course, who is on this call uh, doing um, uh, translation, our seniors program coordinator, and Cassandra McKenzie, our youth coordinator. And I also just wanted to mention some goodbyes and gratitude to people that you may have come across in the last year if you've contacted the Center. So Kayla Walton, who was our program manager uh, for three years, she also handled our youth program, uh, our youth program, so she was the director for that. Uh, Jesse Murray, Cindy Rivers, Jamili Bacchanali, Dominique White, Satara Fernando, and Jason Garcia. So uh, we had a lot of lessons to learn. And what we really learned was um, we needed to be supportive, um, even to the most marginalized in our community here in the city. And so uh, part, of, uh, part of being responsive and being, uh, being supportive is uh, supporting um, our team to support others. So we've embarked on a very intensive um, training regimen. So we've all taken mental health first aid, we've taken naloxone training, the dynamics of HIV through HIV Edmonton, uh, learning about trauma-informed practice, uh, first aid, 
uh, bystander intervention and so much more. So upcoming for us will be um, assist training, so um, suicide prevention training, um, and we hope to get some harm uh, reduction on the books as well. Uh, just whatever we can do to make sure that everyone is well equipped to uh, to do the work here. Um, some of the things that we've also done uh, in this past year was allyship and empowerment workshops. Um, the empowered allies uh, workshops had amazing uptake and feedback and. Um, what we've also taken from these workshops is revising the format and offerings from QT BIPOC people and that we could um, uh, use help from our partners to help promote the QT BIPOC sessions once they're up and running again. So we had some funds that we could uh, that we had left to spend and it's like well let's put them towards these workshops and see what happens and what was great about this piece is that. Um, we had a lot of community members say uh, we, you know, we were either at the pride parade or uh, we heard that things had happened at the pride center and we were feeling helpless and we just wanted to know um, how to help and how to unpack our emotions around what happened, how can we do better and so this allyship um, empowering allies was just a wonderful piece and. Um, when we had QT BIPOC people show up, it was wonderful to have them kind of um, have a, a safe space to unpack their own feelings. Um, and especially around COVID-19 as well, um, this was a really important piece to have. So uh, COVID has, uh, has impacted the center quite a lot. So a lot of the community groups have had to um, basically stop running because we couldn't have all of these people in the pride center uh, just with the, the virus going around um, so what we still had going was information and referral so people could call or email the pride center for resources and we also have our free therapy program which is our drop in single session counseling through um, the family center. And as far as I know, the family center also works with SAGE as well. So I am very pleased that for seniors, there is some counseling um, available there. So we also, this is something that I learned is that we have a strong relationship uh, with our refugees and newcomers and the community. And so we've partnered with EMCN over the last four years, actually, to partner with 2S LGBTQ plus newcomers who have, you know, come to Canada. And one thing that I've learned about uh, people in this process of being a refugee or a newcomer is that they even though they leave countries where they are endangered um, from actions by family and friends they have the i guess the coverage of citizenship but when they come to canada they don't have that citizenship anymore they are stateless um, they really ha don't have a lot of rights and so um, it's it's very difficult to adjust, whether you're coming from Eastern Europe, or you're coming from the Caribbean, or you're coming from the Middle East. Um, there's, there's so much that is involved in the process of getting here, because you may not traverse just one country, you may go across several to get to Canada. There's the uh, cultural adjustment. And there's also uh, depending on what you look like, um, encountering discrimination, you know, based um, in racism as well. Uh, so a number of our refugees and newcomers take part in our counseling programs. Uh, from the Pride Center's perspective, we also write support letters for refugee claimants. So we write letters uh, supporting refugee claims uh, for those people who have established a relationship with the center. 
So um, we also help arrivals find resources and a sense of community through EMCN. And there is an independent group that is run by some people from EMCN. Uh, it has been running for four years and uh, with, in, uh, with independent funding, which I think is amazing. So it's Friday night online meetups. And uh, when they were not meeting online, they would go and just do physical activities. And I, be I believe when there was that brief gap in the summer, one of the things that the group did was go to the aerial park, um, which I think was pretty amazing. Um, so I'm going to talk a bit about our youth program. So we also have our youth program as well. So information and referral, drop-in counseling, and our youth program, which we call Queer Out, which is on Wednesdays. And it is split into two groups. So ages 13 to 17 and 18 to 24. So there's a number of different activities. Um, over the past year, we've sent out care packages to the youth. I wish I had a picture. Um, they just got a whole bunch of like just really neat goodies. Um, and yeah, that program has been continuing throughout COVID. Um, it is on Discord. And what we've noticed is that um, a lot of the youth that have been attending are from out of town. They're not necessarily from Edmonton. And so once, uh, once we get into in-person programming, we have to think about how are we going to accommodate those young people who are living out of town? So we'll most likely move to a hybrid model where we are um, having activities and, you know, having some kind of uh, a video presence for those. So we also had Aging with Pride. Uh, Aging with Pride uh, ended the first iteration of Aging with Pride, I should say, um, ended in February of this year. Um, but we do have some COVID support. So we do have bus tickets for anybody who needs them. We have taxi vouchers for anyone who um, needs to buy groceries or get to um, appointments. And we also do have food gift cards. So if anyone is in need, or if you do know who's a, uh, anyone who is in need, please contact the Pride Center so that we can get these supports out to them. Uh, we've also had practicum students, uh, and uh, this is something that has happened over time. Uh, so some of the projects that our students did was uh, developing a community group policy. So we at the center normally have community groups that are run by skilled volunteers, and but we didn't have a policy around how these groups would operate. And so we've developed a community pol uh, group policy. And we uh, had the students create a support letter toolkit. Um, one thing that we've uh, realized that we need to have is like legacy documents so that anybody coming into the Pride Center as a, a new employee or a new practicum student uh, would have the tools that they need um, to complete uh, to complete their work successfully and renovations so we are still under under renovations right now um i wonder i might be able to take you on a quick tour so for renovations we are we are at the stage where our painting has been complete we have offices built um, in the back area, our youth space is uh, it's a little crowded right now, but we're um, making some changes to that space as well. Um, we are also we are waiting for flooring to come in, and we're waiting for trim work. Uh, we are rebuilding our library; that's going to be happening soon. And we're hoping, um, since we've been on a bit of a roll since the summer that our renovations would be done sometime in November, uh, December at the very latest. Uh, we had hoped that this would happen, or this would have been completed in October so that we could uh, celebrate our 50th anniversary, but those celebrations are going to have to wait until next year. 
Um, just to talk a little bit about executive and board activities. Uh, so um, we've been working on our strategic planning, uh, looking at an anti-racist, anti-oppression, anti-colonial framework uh, that is inclusive because of so many members that we serve from different age groups, back, uh, backgrounds, experiences and such. We reviewed our bylaws, actually we've submitted them just recently. So we reviewed our bylaws to reduce harm, stabilize the organization and give power to our members. So as part of the bylaws, um, new board members can be voted, uh, can be uh, asked to come aboard at any time of the year instead of um, at the AGM. And we've made all memberships voting memberships. So everyone has the power to vote. We've also looked at just tapping into community and just seeing what they've been doing. So we sent out an EPS survey to the community at large around interactions with law enforcement. And we also sent out strategic planning service uh, surveys to staff, board, community members and community partners as well, just to give us an idea of where we're at as a baseline and what we can do in the future. Um, other focus areas uh, we're looking at mental health, um, like frontline support. So we've been talking to CMHA about a pilot program that goes beyond our uh, drop in single session counseling program with social workers and a phone in program. So from those discussions, um, they've actually approached Isthmus to um, to start Brightline, which is fantastic. And we have a customized training program for our frontline staff that is built specially for us um, so that we can serve our community better. Um, there's 2S LGBTQ plus refugee and newcomer training. So we signed an MOU with the Center for Newcomers in Calgary uh, to expand um, our training, our education offerings. So, um, they have a sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression uh, training modules that are around the needs of 2S LGBTQ plus newcomers. Uh, we're partnering with EMCN. Um, what we want to do is to have an empowerment piece in there where we're setting this up as a mentorship program for refugees and newcomers to become educators through this program. And of course, our uh, information and referrals, making sure our community members are connected to the right resources in a timely manner. Um, let me see. So for seniors and transgender programming. So in development, aging with pride. So we are working with EPSG and SAGE to develop sustainable seniors programming. Um, and I'm pleased to say that this is the first time EPSG stage and PCE connected, and we actually had a face to face meeting. We had our masks on, but it's still face to face. Um, and I'm hoping to have more meetings like that with different um, community uh, organizations uh, so that they know that we're here. We're, um, yeah, we're here, we're, cute. we're queer, we're not going anywhere, but that we're also here to partner as well. Um, our transgender programs, we are in the process of revamping our transgender programming, and we know that this is a significant gap. Um, so we would like to um, be in the process of recruiting uh, volunteers to, to help with this programming. Um, what do we need? What's missing? What are the gaps? That kind of thing. And we also have a grant for a volunteer training program. And through that, uh, we are creating, oops, try to get out of the sun here or out of the shadow. Um, we're creating modules for a comprehensive volunteer program to develop the best volunteers ever who can work anywhere. So there will be decolonization modules, anti-racism, uh, sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, um, code of conduct, um, that kind of thing. And so uh, what we're hoping is that uh, from an environmental scan, uh, gathering what our different uh, 
community organizations need, um, we would be able to send volunteers their way who are trained through our program. I like I included this quote, no pride for some of us without liberation for all of us. And so part of what I've been doing to, again, build those connections and relationships is I bring the network to the table. Um, and I believe that this was this is a, a, a new direction for the Pride Center. So the Pride Center is pretty much, and I have said this in a number of different uh, meetings with different uh, organizations and um, that reach out to us or politicians, you know, uh, Pride Center really is kind of like low hanging fruit. <laughs> um, it's the one organization everybody knows to ask questions of, um, to ask emotional labor of. And the Pride Center does not speak for everyone, and I make sure that that's clear. And whenever the Pride Center has been invited to um, contribute uh, time, resources, um, expertise, input, um, I bring the group along. So we've had a group meeting with uh, Edmonton Police Services. I've uh, involved Silver Skate had approached us about pride themed events, and I made sure that the network was involved in this discussion. We've also been in contact uh, from the Edmonton International Airport. And one thing that I will be doing is, is letting them know that, okay, um, we want to look at being an inclusive airport, an inclusive gateway. How can we bring our other, uh, my other network partners uh, to be involved in this process? So how does Edmonton International Airport look when you are a gay senior coming off the plane? How welcome are you going to feel? Or if you're transgender, or if you're um, if you are a queer trans black indigenous person of color how are you going to feel when you come into the airport coming into the rest of the city what's out what's in edmonton for you so we've been having some discussions around that and also the edmonton fire rescue services they reached out to us in the summer um, and put on oh what was it now i can't remember it was a camp it was a uh, two-day weekend camp and community members were invited uh, to actually really just kind of be firefighters for the weekend and they actually uh, did rappelling and like crawled through smoky uh, enclosed spaces wore the masks and equipment and so what Edmonton Fire is trying to do is to improve their recruitment process to include uh, to us LGBTQ plus people. Um, just as a statistic, uh, there's 2000 uh, people on the force. Um, eight of those are women and maybe one or two of them are um, lesbian. So uh, Edmonton Fire has a lot of work to do there. So um, just going back to the, the quote that I had shared earlier. So we're not free until we are all free. And that's, that's something that I believe um, so much. So what does liberation look like? Um, how do we liberate ourselves and our community together? And how do we imagine possibilities? You know, emotionally, physically, sexually, economically, um, in an anti-racist way, in an anti-oppressive way, in an anti-ageist way, which is something that I'm very, very conscious of these days, uh, you know, being a woman in my mid-50s. Um, Anti-ableist um, and trauma-informed. Whoops. So, getting to 50 years of pride. So, uh, I don't know if a lot of you know it, but um, 2021 is the 50th anniversary of the Pride Center of Edmonton. And I happened to just discover that, like just through going through different documents and looking on our website. And our website says, you know, um, 
the Pride Center began as GATE in 1971 at the University of Alberta um, as a student group. And here we are, you know, 50 years later. And I think this is definitely uh, a, a time uh, that we, we definitely need to mark. So if you don't know where the Pride Center is, and credits to Shane Allen for uh, Bennett for his photos. So we are located downtown, like directly behind Grant McEwen. We're on the second floor, uh, but we have our main doors that you could go into. And when I think about what the Pride Center could be in, uh, going into the future, I don't know if any of you have seen it, but there is a movie on Netflix called Jules Catch One. And this is a picture of Catch One. It was a nightclub in Los Angeles and it had closed after 40 years, but it wasn't just a nightclub. Um, Jewel uh, Thea Williams created a place of belonging, safety, community and healing. So initially it had started out as a nightclub for QT BIPOC people to go to and, and just feel safe and have a good time. And then it was a place that everybody went to. Um, and it reminds me of like some of the clubs here in Edmonton. It's like, this is a place for you and your friends. So you had Madonna showing up here. You had Sandra Bernhardt. You had like everybody who is everybody came and felt comfortable, safe and connected. Um, and Catch One actually grew into more than just being a club. So uh, Jill Thea Williams uh, became an acupuncturist. And so part of the building was dedicated to being a clinic. So she would deliver acupuncture services there. And if you watch the movie, you'll see that there's this really nice uh, waiting room and it's just really comfortable and cozy with, you know, like cozy chairs and people just feeling safe. Um, that's what I want to see for the Pride Center of Edmonton. Um, and this is a quote from Jewel. I would love to see those of you that are young, teenagers or younger, know that we were here to make it easier for you. I believe this is the mission. Take advantage of it. Learn as much as you can about what it is that we did. So I think it is very critical that the young folks know that we are here for them. And I hope that they know that they are also here for us too, to you know, keep us alive and keep our imaginations going and imagining possibilities for what the Pride Center could be in the future. Um, so I thought this quote was really good to have. Uh, we should indeed keep calm in the face of difference and live our lives in a state of inclusion and wonder at the diversity of humanity. And I think being in Edmonton um, at this time, uh, we see this wonderful diversity of humanity here. And I just wanted to thank everyone for coming. Thank you for listening. If there are questions or comments, we'll throw the floor open now. All right, questions, are they in the chat? Larry, would you mind reading out the questions I, I, to happy me? Happy to do the, uh, uh, I don't see any questions in the chat room. Uh, anyone who wishes to ask a question can do so either in person or in the in the chat room. So I will I will leave that there. Um, Michael, it looks like you have a, uh, yes. a question. Well, I I actually have uh, a thanks yeah more of a comment. For, first of all, Don, thanks very much. Um, I, I I think the presentation not only was well done but very informative. I, I um, appreciate uh, kind of the status of 
where things are today, as well as the major kinds of efforts, and also uh, what you're hoping for the future. Because they, as you said, they, they, at the beginning, they were trying to look forward. Um, and and I, I, I think um, uh, Edmonton Pride Senior Group was trying to look forward as well, perhaps in, in a slightly different way kind of thing in that too. So, so I, I appreciate very much what you had to say and, and thank you for the presentation. It was really excellent. Thank you, Michael, and you're welcome. Uh, and thank you from me as well, Don. I would like to uh, uh, welcome uh, Robert Kepperton from Saskatoon's 55 plus LGBT uh, coffee group. So let me say welcome to you and we're delighted to see, to see you here this program actually partially began with the Saskatoon component in the Tri-Cities project. So again, welcome uh, uh, Dawn or uh, Kim can perhaps answer Roy's question about the contact number for the Pride Center. Yes, the phone number, I'll put it in the chat. It is 780-488-3234. Thank you so much, Don. You're welcome. And um, yes, just a reminder that the phone lines are open on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 12 o'clock onwards. Oh, oh, and John, I had a question. Oh, uh, Blair. Yeah, sorry. Uh, John, I was wondering with all the programs and services that you're providing, what's the main ways that our community, wherever part of the community they're from, hear about your services or know about the Pride Center? What, what ways do you think is the most common ways? Yeah, so our, we've been really uh, fortunate to have some funding for, uh, to hire a social media coordinator. So that's, we started like intensifying our social media when I started. That was one thing that I wanted to get out there was, um, to get past that impression that nobody knows about the Pride Center. Nobody knows what we're doing. So social media was one thing that I focused on right away. So we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're also on Twitter. We also have, um, we also have a newsletter that goes out twice a month. So once one is for events, the other one is for, um, like community updates and information. So that's how we stay in touch with people. And our followers have been growing every single month. More and more and more people are joining our mailing lists. More and more people are following us. And they're spreading the word too, which is really fantastic. And I would also say too that, that another way that the word is getting around um about the pride center is all of you because if you're getting invitations if you're getting posters for at least with aging with pride um, you can share those out um, and you're also welcome to uh, be on our mailing list if you're not on it already so that you can get our newsletters and share those out as well so thank you blair eric Listen, and I really appreciate the work that you're doing and this initiative going forward. But in the past, there has been a perception that the Pride Center is focused solely on youth and youth programming. And I appreciate this effort to try to be more inclusive uh, for people of other ages. Um, but I'm wondering if things can be done, for example, on the Facebook on the uh, on your social media feeds, occasionally putting in articles from Sage USA, which is a huge um, organization, has got a lot of resources and so on. And I think you know, sort of including information about that, including information about senior centers in Edmonton, um, those sorts of things will help dispel that. Uh, that feeling that uh, the Pride Center is only interested in youth programming. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out as a suggestion. I really appreciate the work that you're doing and uh, the efforts to try to involve the uh, queer senior community. Thanks very much. Thank you, Eric. And you know, those are great suggestions. Um, 
I don't think that we do have enough seniors content and I like personally I wouldn't have even realized where to go for that. Um, I do subscribe to some newsletters in the city so definitely sages and there's the uh, seniors seniors council Edmonton seniors council Eric. Yeah I, I'll tell you so sage in the United States is the it used to be for the advancement of gays and le lesbians I don't know but it's a uh, it's a fantastic resource it's very different than sage in edmonton sage in edmonton is the seniors association of greater edmonton um the edmonton seniors coordinating council is uh, an overriding uh, coordination body for uh, all of the seniors organize senior serving organizations in in edmonton and then the last thing i thought of afterwards was uh, just throwing in a suggestion in terms of education perhaps educating the younger uh LGBTQ community about seniors, some of the issues that they face, the reluctance to seek medical, you know, the reason why reluctance to seek medical assistance, the reason why uh, self closeting is the default position, the reason why this, I think anytime that I've talked to a group of younger uh, folks, uh, and explain this, there's always been a holy cow, we had no idea. Um, so I think that might be a, a part of an education process uh, for perhaps a queer out or something. Anyways, all those are just uh, just suggestions. But if you want, it, you know, you can ask your social media person to get a hold of me, I can hook them up with plenty of links for uh, other organizations, uh, again, serving seniors. I don't want to be <laughs> not trying to push the, seat, the the Pride Center to become only seniors, but I think having some more senior uh, information uh, in your uh, output would be very helpful in building credibility in the community. Thanks very much for what you're doing. Thanks, Eric. And yes, um, I'll connect you to our social media person, definitely, because uh, yeah, um, I know I would appreciate those links and, you know, being, uh, and I think it's really important to share those things as well. Um, and the education piece, I think it would be like, it would be really great to, you know, maybe connect some of you with um, our youth team to do a presentation. Just, you know, we could see what we could do um, because they're gonna be seniors too, you know? Um, I'm going to be a senior. I'm in my mid fifties already, and I'm starting to think about a few things, you know, um, where am I going to live? You know, who's going to take care of me? All of these, you know, all of these different concerns, right? Um, yeah. So I'll definitely uh, look into that. Um, any other questions? Murray, you had a question. Two, two, Hi, Murray. Two, two <laughs> questions uh, from the chat room. Oh, okay. Um, one more general about whether uh, uh, Pride Center of Edmonton has considered presenting to schools, and then a very specific question about whether or not the Pride Center has queer books and movies available for loan. So um, we have considered presenting to schools we just don't have the capacity right now. And that is one thing that I would like to build into our strategic plan and our strategy, actually. Um, we were in a deficit, $100,000 deficit in 2019. Um, we're in, you know, we're in good graces uh, because of the COVID funding. But what happens after that, after the COVID funding runs out? So I would like to develop our education program so that it is self-sustaining. I'll have to figure out how that works. And you know, going into schools would be a possibility once we actually get to that point. We have to do all this foundational policy work before we even get to that point. Um, there was another question there as well, right? Uh, the uh, second question was specifically about whether you have queer books and movies for loan. Oh, wow. Did you know that the Pride Center of Edmonton has the largest queer library in Western Canada? 
that's what we have. So um, right now our library is in boxes because of the renovations. However, we do have boxes that we were gonna give away to folks. So if you're interested in a box of books, <laughs> we'll be happy to you know have have you come and pick pick up a box or we can arrange for a box to be dropped off for you but we have about a thousand books to give away and the ashbourne still has to pick up a few boxes so and yes if you are interested in getting some new materials we would be happy to do that just let us know Murray. Hi, everybody. It's so good to see people I haven't seen for a couple of years, for God's sakes. Um, first of all, Don, thank you for your stewardship. Through these difficult times, it's, you know, not just COVID, but all of the political ramifications that we've dealt with in the last few years. Really appreciate the work that you and your team are doing. Um, two things. One, how can the group of us help the Pride Center reach some of your goals. And the second, I just wanted to let everybody know, the last few months I've been working on uh, a podcast with the Edmonton Heritage Council and the Alberta Labor History Institute, all about the Delwyn Wren case. So we've taken this epic seven year battle with our provincial government and we're in the process of digesting that into about a 55 minute podcast that will be going out on the air on CKUA mid-November. I can provide you with the link when that all comes together, but we've got Sheila Greckel and Lyle Caney and Julie Lloyd, all of the people that were heavily involved, um, that former city councilor, what was that guy's name? Uh, yeah, Michael, Michael Fair. he's involved in it as well. So it was a lot of fun putting that thing together. And uh, I think it's going to be a tremendous educational tool, um, not just for our, our fabulous community, but for the community at large and the equality rights seeking in, in terms of how did that happen and how did we get that done? And it was all done with allies and, and certainly all of the people I see on this screen were a part of that as well. So uh, keep up the good work and I look forward to having coffee or lunch with you sometime in the future, Dawn. Yes, I'm looking forward to it too. Um, yes, and you know, Delwyn's case, uh, it was, I mean, I was maybe 22, a mature student, <laughs> it was like 22. I had black sure. hair. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, Delwyn was the uh, the TA for my chemistry class. Oh, no he, kidding. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And he made chemistry fun. He was so gentle and kind. And it was just a shock when everything just kind of blew up. It's like he was there and all of a sudden he was gone. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to say that whenever I have seen him over the years, he remembers me. So <laughs> it's pretty neat. Um, what can you do to help support us? Wow, that's a that's a good question. Send us money. Yeah. Um, but really, um, yeah, I would say I would say that I would say um, tell people you know about the Pride Center. You know um, that you know we're we're here. We're um, no, we're not offering our education um, as we would like to right now. We're referring that to Isthmus, but like until we get our ducks in a row. But anybody looking for resources, anybody, you know, looking for that safe space, you know, we're, we're here. It's a little difficult with this transition, with the renovations, with COVID, but we're so excited to be um, having our doors open again and having people come. So I think right now, that's probably a hard question to answer. Like, what could you do? I think once we're, our doors are open and our programming is in person and things get going again, I think that would be a much better conversation to have um, at that time. But right now, 
share share our social media, share our newsletters, um, and just talk about how great we are. I think that would help. Talk to your friends with money. <laughs> thank you, Don. <laughs> You're welcome, and thank you, Marie. You're welcome. Blair, did you have a second question? Yes, yeah, so it's more a comment, Don. Uh, you were talking about your library, uh, 1,000 uh, items. Um, I'm wondering if you thought of once you get the library up onto the shelves and out of the boxes and so on, if you looked at strategies to get them not just given away, but people boring them. I've given a number of books to the uh, to your library over the years, but when I was in there, I never saw anybody, I don't know if they didn't even know it was there or taking them out. I know as a young man coming out, um, books on gay themes at the library was a huge, huge issue for me. And so I'd go through, you know, online or, or through the stacks trying to find them. And I read a lot of the um, key authors, which I think a lot of the young people probably don't know about. It would be very relevant to, for their lives. So I was wondering if you thought about some strategies to make sure those books and, and if you got DVDs, I know people don't watch DVDs much anymore. Uh, if you got some strategies to, to make uh, especially youth aware of those books and how they can borrow them. You know, I haven't put my mind to that yet, but that definitely makes sense. Like the, the library is um, set up to, um, for people to borrow books. Um, we're just implementing a, like a scanning system. And one thing that I do want to do is actually register our library with the Library Association of Canada so that we can be recognized as a library and that we can get some of the perks that go with that. Um, sorry, I just saw in the, the chat is Stella a senior. I think she's, yeah, I think she's getting there. She's got a little gray around the eyes. She's seven years old. Is that seniors? A dog age? I don't know. Um, she's probably middle aged, I think, like me. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, those, those are definitely good thoughts around the library. I know that we're, we're adding to it, but you're right. There are those um, historical books, you know, um, I think we had found like a uh, first edition James Baldwin or something in one of the, uh, one of the boxes. Um, so there's definitely some classics uh, in there. So I think that's something that we'll, we'll promote with the youth. And I, just from my own experience, like just working with with queer youth, I'm sure once they're in the space and they actually see the books, because they'll be on like a main wall, uh, they would be totally willing to to borrow some stuff. Oh, I'm just gonna give you all a quick tour if I can. Of course, we're we're at we have six minutes left in our hour. Okay, so. This is kind of like the back of the center. Not really a lot going on, but the paint is different. Our lighting is different now, as you can see. So we have like warmer lighting. I got to go. See you later, folks. Bye, Murray. Thank you, Murray. <gasps> Murray will be our speaker in two weeks' time with Jackie <laughs> Ford. And. We have offices that we're building in the back. Eee. But this will all look really great once we get all the trim work done, all our doors and windows put in. So yeah, that's where we're at. So I only have 2% left on my laptop. <laughs> okay, well, we have one final question from Joan, which is about uh, are there volunteer, volunteering opportunities uh, at Pride Center? Uh, not just yet. We're wanting to develop our, our uh, program first, like our education program for volunteers. But um, there is a casino coming up on December 21st and 22nd. So if you are interested in volunteering, you can always call us 780-488-3234 um, or you can email us at hello at pridecenteredmonton.ca. 
and the volunteer and to for the casino requires volunteer uh, um, uh, services certainly. Definitely. Are there any other questions that I missed or comments on anyone from anyone? And if not, I, I really want to thank Don for um, what really was a very thoughtful, wide ranging talk and a wide ranging and I think very optimistic discussion. So uh, thank you all. I'd like also specifically to thank Tim for his technical assistance and for the, uh, for the signing. Thanks, Kim. Um, I hope we'll see you all again next week when our speaker will be Blair McKinnon, who is not on my screen right there, he is, uh, who, uh, who will give an overview of the housing uh, project for GLBTQ2 plus seniors and allies that uh, uh, Evan Applied Seniors Group has uh, been uh, working uh, very vigorously on. I'd like to ask a further favor, uh, which is we will be sending you out an evaluation questionnaire. It's short, it's sweet. Please, please fill it out and return it to us. Your opinions are critical uh, for our future planning uh, for these programs. Uh, for the programs, which for the moment are uh, online only, but will, when we are able, also have an in-person component. Uh, to, you, we ask that you uh, pre-register uh, for this and you can contact us at agingwithpride at pridecenteredmonton.ca. And I saw one final question, which I am, I'm just getting into the chat box, which says, thank you, uh, thank you. Uh, I, um, um, Robert asked uh, about getting information to the group in Saskatoon, so you can perhaps link up there. And Dawn, I see you've already put on the email address. So let me give my personal thanks and turn the uh, meeting over to our host.